You are now listening to FemRegard Podcast with Tessa Markle and Carolina Alvarez. Mmm, Fem. Welcome back, Fem Fam. Uh, thank you guys always for listening. This is our wrap up of the season. Oh so my we gosh. hope you guys enjoyed this season. Um, I know that doesn't really mean a lot because like we're going to have an episode next week anyway. <laughs> That's just how we organize it. So we're really excited. It makes us <laughs> feel good. So thank you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, we already have some amazing guests lined up for next season too. So we're really excited to bring that to you. But today we have three amazing guests. So get excited, guys. You've never had that many guests at once. <laughs> oh, we're excited. Yes. yes. All right. So I will introduce our ladies. This is the team for the film Into Light, which they will tell you about. Um, so we have my friend Amy Walker, who is a writer, producer, and actress. She stars in the film. Um, she's been featured on the Today Show, NPR, and Inside Edition. She's an accents expert, which we're going to have to get together about this because I need some training. <laughs> um, and she has three features due out this year and in development for another feature and a TV series. And then we also have Martine Malol. She's the producer. She's the founder of Cali Pictures. And the production company has another feature due out this year on Mary Pickford. And before diving into film, she was the executive VP of BCBG. And then Jessica Graham, the director. She's an award-winning, award-winning filmmaker and actor and recently directed an award-winning short film on domestic violence, as well as the pilot of a web series for YouTube's Women in Comedy Initiative. So thank you all, ladies, for coming on today. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thank you. It's a joy. Fem fam, I love that. Yes, <laughs> welcome <laughs> aboard. We have three fem queens. I'm so excited. So let's talk. Who started? What's Into the Light? What is the, what is it about? Whose idea was it? Um, Amy, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's called Into Light. It's a short film about nine minutes. And the idea came four years ago. I went to a National Women's History Alliance event um, and got to learn about some of our foremothers who I didn't know about because we just weren't taught about hardly any of them. But they were there. They were real. They were powerful. And some would say ahead of their time, but that's just because we didn't know they were of their time. And these phenomenal women have been in every time. Mm -hmm. So I got to see a presentation about Inez Milholland Boisevain, who I didn't know about, but she was a martyr to the suffrage movement and to civil rights and to uh, you know voting rights, really equal rights for all, which in the late 1800s, early 1900s was you know kind of radical. It wasn't everybody. Um, but she, she was a member of the NAACP. She was a lawyer working to, to get prison changed from just punishment to reform. Oh, wow. She was a peace oh. activist in World War I, which was totally unheard of to go travel uh, to Italy. Oh, wow. Well, a woman, yeah. So I'm really excited. She has a huge story, but we wanted to give just a little taste of her story. When I found out about her, I, uh, I put a clip of her final speech in my one woman show that I took around the world and it had a great response from people. And I really wanted to tell more of her story. So that's kind of the long version, I guess. Of it. Yeah. I, I got this idea to do a short and just um, you know, use it as a proof of concept for a larger narrative, but then also to inspire people to vote this year. Yeah. I really love that. So what part of her whole um, history did you want to highlight in the short? The climax. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> so it's it all um, her, her final speech yeah. here in Los Angeles, uh, 104 years ago now, 1916. In L.A. Of in all L.A. places. Yeah. She wow. was from New York um, and lived in London for kind of her formative years as a teenager um, but then, yeah, she was on this major tour in an election year that year. And, and so it's, it's vacillating from her. Wow. She was really sick and she didn't know that she was like, she didn't know how sick because they were still discovering this illness that she had. Um, and because she'd been nonstop going on this tour, it was supposed to be 50 cities in 30 days by train 
um, rallying for the vote for women. Yeah. And so it's from, from her, um, I've always been fascinated by that moment when you're, you're backstage and you're whatever is going on and then here you are and you have to be everything you need to be for that moment for the people. And so it's her with a doctor and her sister trying to get prepared to go on stage and have this speech. And then, and then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. I mean, Carolina and I are big fans of doing the proof of concept before <laughs> the big thing, but I love that you're taking it, um, you know, and making it its own project. You know, it's not just the proof of concept for a feature that might come out eventually, like it's its own thing and doing it in an election year and with everything going on right now, like that's just perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's how I like to, to utilize my art for, mm-hmm. For purpose. Yeah. That's awesome. And how long ago did you say that you discovered Inez and like had this I idea? I discovered her about four years ago. Okay. And then um, wrote the, sh- the short film script about a year ago. Okay, nice. So then how did the three of you t- all come together? Well, the first person I went to was Jessica because we have worked together on two other occasions and she's just phenomenal. It's so mindful the way that she holds everything, but also her her vision is very, um, very whole. You know, it's very holistic. She feels in the inside and the outside and the look of it. And um, and as an author of this incredible book, which I'm sure she'll tell you about, um, I just I felt like Inez's essence would really resonate with Jessica, and that she'd be a great person to bring it Love to that. life. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> yeah, it um it as soon as I got the email from Amy, um, it was interesting because, um, like Inez, I deal with chronic illness (laughs) and I was Mm -hmm. kind of in the midst of a somewhat challenging time. And I got the email asking about the project and I felt my whole body just get filled with joy and life, which I really listened to (laughs) because, um, because a lot of the time when you're dealing with pain a lot, that's not the experience. And I was just immediately filled with like energy and happiness. And I was like, well, this is clearly a yes, I'm gonna, gonna be doing this. Um, And then I, I read, um, I read a biography on her and I was like oh I I see why why Amy contacted me about this it's not just that we've worked together but it's that you know Inez was also um, a believer in free love and I'm a I work around sexuality that's one of the one of the jobs that I have and um, she was just very open and outspoken about her sexuality which is the way that I've been. She's dealing with chronic illness. She's, she's an, she was an actress. She was um, an activist. Like she was multi-passionate and just spoke mm-hmm. to me on so many levels. And then also she's, she's got her areas where she, she needed to do some work, like she around intimacy and things like this. And I related to that too. So I was like, wow, like this woman was amazing. And I had only seen images of her. I had seen some images of her on the white horse um, in marches, but mm-hmm. I didn't know her story. And so um, Amy introduced me to her and gave me the amazing gift of inviting me to come on board for this. And it's just been, it's been um, an incredible experience all around. That's so perfect. I, yeah, I, I think so too. And I feel like, um, those stories, like how it resonated with you are going to resonate with a large, you know, audience, especially, you know, us women, like we, we want to hear those stories. And I love that. You also just felt like in the show, they struggle with, should I take on this project or not? And I love that you just really like listen to your gut and you're like, this, this feels, this fills me with joy. And so like, I'm going to go for it. And that's probably why it's going to be super successful. Well, (laughs) I, I hope that that's some part of it, but obviously Amy is, um, Amy's amazing. I pretty much would always say yes to Amy. Like my body is always a yes to Amy, (laughs) but this, uh, this project in particular, you know, and, and, and like Amy said, you know, using, using art to, to create change. And that's very important to me. You know, time is limited. Life is short. What am I, what am I trying mm. to do with, with what I'm putting out there in the world? But there's a person that really made this possible. And that's Martine. Martine, Martine. is a phenomenal. I, I just, I'm in awe of her. Literally, but not have happened. 
if, no, if no, she hadn't that. pulled out every stop. <laughs> and I have to say about this incredible woman. So we met at this at H Club. May it rest no, I in peace. It was around long enough for us to get together. And exactly. Like, it, served, it served its purpose. It did. But she was the producer of this film that was screening there called The Women Who Run Hollywood. And it's an amazing film. Totally check it out. And I reached out to her and sight unseen, she was willing to take a meeting with me and just trust and give it her all. And she's, oh, she's just a phenomenal human being. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. I love that all of you are involved too in so many like just, you know, women's rights and women history and all of that kind of heavy um, projects. Because that's, you know, what me and Carolina are all about. That's what Femme Regard Productions is all about. So it's a perfect match, just saying. <laughs> yeah, so um, we met, I work with um, two filmmakers in mm -hmm. France. Uh, because I'm French originally, uh, I've been here for 20 years, um, and they make documentaries about old Hollywood and about the American society. So I partner with them. I'm kind of their arm in the U.S., and we uh, make those documentaries for France, uh, for Arte, and for another channel, and then they're distributed all over the world. Before I came on board with them, they had made a documentary that went to mm. Cannes called The Women Who Run Hollywood. And it's basically um, talking about the early 1900s when there were more, more women in Hollywood than men. There was, there was that time that existed. And um, I just love this doc. And I think those two women are just brilliant. They're a powerhouse. We do about four documentaries every year. Um, they're... They're just incredible. And they were in LA and I said, why don't we do a screening of the women who run Hollywood at the H club because they have screening series. And I want to show this film. This film is not distributed in the U S yet. And I wanted to show it to some people. So we, that's what we did. And Amy was there because she's one, she was one of the founding members of the H club and she reached out to me and I have, first I love, um, I love period. Uh, I love, so we've, we've done like a documentary about Douglas Fairbanks. Um, we're, we're done um, the sex in Hollywood. We've done um, the image of the witch throughout Hollywood, like in the ages. So we, we take a, a subject, whether it's someone we are doing one, we're releasing one this year on Jack Lemmon. Uh, we're in the midst of doing one about um, Anthony Hopkins. So we're, they're do, the Clara and Julia Cooperberg are doing a lot of documentaries, but I love their docs about old Hollywood. And when Amy came and talked to me about Inez and um, her fight, and that it was also a period piece, I was very intrigued. Um, one of my challenges is I'm new to the industry, but I've I've kind of gone backwards. I started with a very big film, then I did a smaller one and I had never done a short. And I said, you know, I need to do a short film one day. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, and then I said, you know, is there something behind it? Because, you know, I want also it to be part of a bigger project. And we've been talking about, and she'll tell you more about it, um, making it a bigger project also. And then she's such an incredible woman. I just fell in love. I have a tendency to, work with people that I love. And um, I think it makes everything easier when you just, yeah. you know, you just respect the people. And, and I love working with bright creatives. I'm not creative, I'm a business. I come from the business world of fashion. I'm into more of the business world of cinema. And, um, you know, I said, yes, of course, I'll take this on and, and help you guys. and snack that budget and get stuff for free yeah. and, and we'll make it. And, and then I went to work and then I met the team. Jessica is incredible. I discovered later that she's also a brilliant, brilliant actress. Um, she has a film that I really like uh, where she's incredible. And I met a whole team of people. I love one of the things that brought me to the industry is uh, when I worked in fashion, I was the head of a very, very big company and I was working all the time and not many 
not meeting that many people. I was just working within the company all the time. And um, what when I switched to being uh, a producer four years ago, one of the things I loved was meeting people. I just wanted to meet all kinds of people. I just wanted to network. I just wanted to, and I love working and meeting incredible women. And that's, that's kind of my thing. So I try to surround myself with as many creatives and brilliant creatives as I can because I'm zero in creative. I'm all business. Which <laughs> we need. I, think it's, I feel like it's my role to help them bring their voice and help them make their projects happen and help them get heard. And that's my little part in the process. And that's Basically. so important to like find your tribe and surround yourself with those kind of people, you know, like it's important to find the people that are able to do the things that you don't do. First of all, just like objectively, that's important, <laughs> but then to find people that you really vibe with and that really are, you know, looking to create the same kind of quality stuff that you are, the same kind of messages to put out there and everything. Like we talk about that on the show all the time. That's like number one to succeed, you know? So yeah. And that, yeah, the, again, the fact that now hearing from all of you guys are all such, have such a love for each other and respect for each other, one another's work. That's incredible to have on a team. Like that's dream team. Hey, fam fam. How many of you are podcasters yourself or interested in keeping up with the rapidly growing podcast world? There's so much to learn and keep up with, but we have just the way to do it. Join the PodMov community. We have, we get their daily newsletter delivered to our inbox, connect through the private Facebook group, and are even featured in their June 15th, 2020 issue. They even have a huge annual summit for podcasters to network, learn, and perfect their craft. If you're not convinced yet, just subscribe and try it out anyway, because guess what? It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. Use this link so they know we sent you. Don't worry, I'll read it off now, but we'll also type it out in our show notes for you to copy and paste. And it is podcastmovement.com slash subscribe question mark MWR equal sign 2EFF8BBA. We'll see you in the Facebook group or even better at the summit. And also just, we always also like to, on our show, when we talk about like when you're making a film, like why do you, why are you the ones to make the film? Mm -hmm. And clearly, you know, as the story like, resonates with all of you in one aspect again or another and you guys have that to really put those messages out thank you yeah it's uh at that presentation um bob cooney who's one of the historians who works with us on on the film who works with me i guess uh in creating it he he had given the presentation and then he said I, I feel like it's time we need to have a film about inez um, who agrees? And I, my hand shot up. <laughs> who do you think should play here? <laughs> and he said, yeah, who, who do you think? And I was like, me. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I bought his book and, you know, we kind of like laughed, but I was like, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. And I tried to kind of get something to happen then. That would have been the centennial of her passing uh, in 2016. Um, and then I thought, you know, people have been trying to tell her story for a long time and maybe somebody else who at that time, you know, was more connected. And it's like, if nobody else is telling that story, just do it, do it, mm -hmm. do it. You will find the people if those, if that core is there and it needs to be told. And that has been this whole project, you know, people, incredible people in every department have come in to level it up. Yeah. And Three of those departments are my my beloved man, Nipun Nair, who edited it, who did the sound, uh, soundscape, what do we call that? Sound design, which mm -hmm. is a whole world in this one because of her illness right. and the composing. You know, it was a lot <laughs> to both pour in, but that, and then what that crafted, then we got this, uh, Martine got this award-winning colorist, Maxine uh, Gervais, Okay. to just like make it gorgeous oh <laughs> uh, yeah she's she's just incredible she colored my first film and um I went out to her and she's just she has she's working in all the big Hollywood productions she got 
HPA Awards for Pacific Rim, which is recognized as one of the best colored film in the industry. Um, And she's just incredible. And within, in the middle of her other huge Hollywood projects, she took care and she took us on and it was amazing. And she did an incredible job in what, a couple of weeks? (laughs) It was just so so easy and and incredible with her because she's also a great creative woman. Yeah, and we gave her very little um, sort of direction, you know? We wanted to see what her creative voice, where she would take it with her creative voice. And so the fact that every single person had put in so much love to it, the extras that we had, all of the crew that we had, people volunteering their time or doing it for peanuts, you know, because of everybody putting that love into it, then somebody like Maxine can see it and, and want to be a part of it, you know? And it was, you know what was great? Something I want to tell a story. Um, when we were uh, trying to get discounts and free stuff and to reduce the budget as much as we can because we financed that through donations. Um, one of the story I love was the woman yes. who um, lent us the pickle lights. I don't know if you guys remember. So there was those lights that our DP wanted. And I'm, I... I was very confused with the lights, I have to say, because we had all kinds of original 1900s lights and it was just like, I didn't know those terms. I didn't know those names. So I was always mixed up between the lights, but there was those huge uh, pickle lights that are behind Amy um, on stage and they are just like, they're beautiful. They're round and they're beautiful and they were expensive. And um, I called the company and I started talking to the woman who was incredible. And I explained the project and she came back and I said, listen, we're, we can give you a donation, but we can't really pay the price. Would you lend them to us for like, we just need them for one day out of the two days of shooting. Uh, I'll come pick them up and bring them back. And she called me back and said, you know, I just became American a few years ago and I was finally able to vote, which was very important to me. Um, and just for that, I understand your fight and I will lend you the, the lights for free. And that was, I thought, just incredible because if you, if you have an incredible story, it resonates with people and people are inclined to help instead of, hey, I'm doing a short film, can I get a price? You know, that's not, that was not the story. The story we were trying you know, to show people what we were doing and express to them you know, that we wanted yeah. to tell an incredible and story and if they wanted to be part of it. I just thought that. I just thought that was so yeah, great that amazing. she just related to. And myself, I, I went through the same thing. I lived here for a few years before mm-hmm. I could vote, um, and I became. And that's American, a huge so testament to our incredible. Emmy-winning DP Sherry Kauk, who did that research and put everything into it, and was like, and fought for those pickle pats. You know, we were like, okay, this is six hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh my god! I was like, I was like, Sherry, do you really need them? Do you? I, because I didn't have the vision, right? I'm the producer. I don't know, you know, what she has in her head and I don't know what it's going to look like and I don't know all that. I just trust, I have a tendency when I produce something to trust the creatives I work with. And I feel like as the producer, that's my role is to support them and trust them because if I start telling them what to do, then I might as well become a director, become a writer, become a cinematographer. But that's not what I want to do. I want to be able to support them. So when you support them, you really have to trust them because you're not in their heads, yeah. right? So I was like, are you sure you need those pickle lights? And she said, yes, yes, trust me. Okay, I'll go, yeah. I'll go Sherry, get them. Sherry's amazing. <laughs> she is, um, she's just an amazing, amazing human, Incredible. but an amazing artist. Um, this is the third time I've worked with her. She shot, um, she saw, shot Listen, which is um, the, la- the last short that I directed before this, which Amy um, starred in. And Sherry shot that, but she also shot a um, like a locked room murder mystery film um, that I acted in and and pro- um, was a producer on uh, called Murder Made Easy. And she she was just what she accomplished with no crew was phenomenal. Um, and and she's just she's such a creative DP. She we, she works she's so generous with me, especially as a new director. She's just incredibly generous with like. Um, supporting me in in finding the very best way to visually express my my vision and um yeah definitely I feel like 
the creative collaboration with her is is such a high point in my life. Just just like with just like with Amy and Martine. <laughs> and Napoon. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> we did it all ver- we did it all over Zoom because of COVID. So me and Amy and Napoon just sitting there hours and hours and hours, like with their their phone on the their screen like showing me what's happening. I mean, was... This phone is looking at that. This phone is looking <laughs> at us. This thing is that screen and this screen. Right. It was hilarious. And it was perfect timing because we shot this thing February 10th and 11th. And we had just moved house. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> and then we were deep into we were already quarantining because <laughs> we were deep into post. And just it, thank God for right. technology. But the big, big gush I do want to mention is our, our donors, because a hundred percent of our of our budget, which was substantial and it kept growing, you know, came from the the generosity of our friends and family and people we don't even know who were inspired by the project. Yeah, that's huge. So thank you for supporting your community and supporting filmmaking, and independent filmmaking. That's awesome. Tell us more about the event. So this this literally is the centennial of the 19th Amendment being ratified. So w- when women were, now this is this is a technical interesting thing how to, how to language it because we had the right to vote as um, as you know Susan B. Anthony was attesting a hundred years prior even to us getting the amendment. But um, you know how do you interpret? equal rights for men, if that's also a short term for humans. So, um, so it was finally clarified, I'll say by the 19th amendment that women do get to vote. Uh, And it was in August of 1920. And so this year is the centennial. And we're looking at, should I say a date? Okay, uh, August 18th, (laughs) because we're just going to do it. It, it, The 18th is is the, the day that it was actually signed. Um, and so that's the day and we're, we're putting together even a, a whole event to celebrate that time and to just inspire us in this time when we need inspiration. And we're looking for other um, shorts for, from a diverse community. We'd really love to have it be a very diverse, equally represented event. Uh, and here's some of these stories that haven't gone out. So we're gonna do that and some Q and A's and um, and launch these films. Another thing I think is that's really important just to mention about Inez at, um, at this time, and another reason why I'm so proud to be part of this project, is that Inez was advocating and fighting for Black women to be able to march um, with the white women. And there were definitely um, women that did not feel that way, white women that did not feel that way. And at a time when um, you know, white feminists really need to be, we really need to be looking at ourselves and seeing uh, bringing in inter- inter- intersectionality, it's like, it, to me, the fact that she was already doing that, and she wasn't perfect, you know, but she was advocating for something that is, is still a big problem today. And um, I just, that's, that's really important to me. Amy shared that with me in our first call, and that was um, really, really important for me to know as well, just who, whose story I'm telling. This is someone I can really get behind. That's amazing. The more you guys talk about her, the more like I'm falling in love with her too. <laughs> Cause I didn't know anything about her. Like, I feel like her last name sounded a little familiar to me when I started looking into your project and stuff. And that was about it. So yeah. There's a lot of women who are just completely erased and, 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 you know, actually there's a historian that I really love right now. Her name is Blair Amani. And she has a couple of different books. One is called Making Our Way Home, which is about the great migration of Black America. And then um, another one called uh, Her Story, which does tell, you know, these stories. And I think it's so important for us to be educating ourselves and each other on like the amazing women of this, of this country who have just been like completely, well, in some cases whitewashed out, but in many cases just washed out because they happen to have a vulva. <laughs> yeah, me too. That was very important and she, you know she was asked to as jessica said to lead this 1913 march uh on a horse you know and she had this whole vision for it and he, there they are at the parade ready to go and and then her NAACP sisters were suddenly not allowed to march and they had their whole you know i mean these are college women too and and you know just phenomenal 
humans and and here they are they've come all this way and then the leader of the march was saying you you can't march with us because then people will they'll put both of our causes together and they won't give us our vote and and that she had the presence of mind to realize that this is all one purpose that you can't have freedom for one and so yeah she said i won't march unless they march with us and and then you know and these women you know we, we really want to tell the bigger story so we can show all these other women who were part of the movement in all in all these different areas of the country and the world and native american and you know chinese american and and the women who in the year prior maybell pingua lee was the one who led the march and she was chinese american and she was on a horse so there are a lot of stories that that need to be told yeah yeah because you don't learn any of this in history class you know you learn like about the 19th amendment like that it exists <laughs> and that there was a suffragette movement but like that's it yeah. and that's that's the women for me the women who run hollywood is completely that nobody learns about them nobody knows who mary pickford is who uh, dorothy asner and agnieszki blache and all these incredible women um because because the history History is written by the winners and by men, really. And that's, and then they tend to forget that there was a woman. And it's so important to just keep tipping the scale. I mean, when you consider that the ERA has still not been ratified. <laughs> like, I mean, it's shocking. Like, it's shocking to think that, like, that, yeah. yeah. And, and that, uh, I think, Miss, Miss America or Mrs. America um, with uh, Kate, Kate Blanchett and, um, um, I'm, I'm blanking right now on, on everybody that's in it, but it's, it's actually really phenomenal. Um, and definitely worth checking out. Yeah. It's, I don't understand why it hasn't gotten more publicity. Like I haven't even really seen anyone talking about it on social media. Um, and it, um, <laughs> it's very good, very educational. Um, you know, and it talks about the issue, you know, talks about all this stuff and that it's, you know, continues to be something that needs to be fought for and advocated yeah. for. Um, and we need to keep like, that's why if I'm in charge of a crew, I'm going to try to get as many women as possible in, in the key roles. And, and, you know, and like for, uh, for listen, which is the film that Amy was in, um, that I directed a couple years back. Um, it, there was a, a kind of a featured extra mm -hmm. that was, um, a guy. And I said to the writer, I was like, let's make it a black woman and let's give her some lines <laughs> and turn it into this whole other role. And it's like, I don't say that to pat myself on the back. I say that because we have to do this. <laughs> like we have to, we have to, as storytellers, it is our responsibility to tell stories of, you know, that, that change the way that our audience perceives reality. Um, you know, you, you have a black man in the white house that completely changes how people experience and it's the same thing with film it's the same thing with with art but it just takes like what you said i love what you said jessica it just takes you as the, the producer the person in in charge to to push yourself to find others and like and make those changes because it, it is your responsibility to do that and and it's not easy and it's you also want to find someone who is in line with your message. So you're, you're focusing on everything. It's not just, okay, because I, I just want a woman crew. No, it's, it's also, it, and it's easy to be mistaken as that, like, oh, that's all I'm trying to do. No, like, you're import, it's important for you to find the right people, but also push yourself to, to make a change at the same time. And it's hard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love men. I, I, I love my man I've been with for 10 years. I love Nipun. I love all the men that were involved in making this film. And I feel like, you know, it's, it's our responsibility to, um, and it's not easy, right? Like, I, it's not easy. Um, and it, it shouldn't be. It's like, of course, it's not easy. It's like a long way to go. So um, yeah, we have to, we have to be willing to be, to be uncomfortable to create change in ourselves and in the world. And and you're doing an amazing job at it because when we were looking for the colorist um, and we were thinking, my first uh, idea was there was a guy I used to work with and Jessica's like, no, I want a woman. I'm like, oh, I don't know any woman. No, I want a woman. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, Maxine, she's amazing. <laughs> I haven't talked to her in three years. I hope she's <laughs> going to remember me. 
but well, <laughs> and then I restart. But if she hadn't pushed me, because it wasn't, you know, sometimes you go to the easiest, and and many times the easiest is the last person you work with recently or something, and then many times you work with men because there's not that many women really that in industry still, and. I'm glad to have someone behind me that's, that pushed me. And thank you again, Jessica. They uh, know we're going to find, we're going to figure it out, and it has to be a woman. Yeah. And there were some times when somebody wasn't aligned with the vision, and you know we needed to rearrange and make that diff, you know, make that change. Um, and that can be hard, but when they're when they're they're in that coherence of the core purpose, it all is so much more easeful and graceful because it's like, yes, we want to be able to pay everybody what they deserve. And yes, we want to at least be able to pay them something or, you know, at least give them a good credit that's going to help them get the next job or something. But it's like, regardless of, of the currency with which we're paying, when that purpose is there, and they're giving it their all, it just lifts everybody up. And that's its own kind of reward too. Well, and you both created a platform where these stories can be amplified and shared and inspire more. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, this has been an amazing platform for us to connect, to meet other women, um, especially we bring on men though too, but it's like a great place to, to have everyone voice what they're working on, especially projects like this. So thank you for creating something like this, finding a team like this, and, and we cannot wait to share this with everyone. And the teaser is really cool. I highly recommend you guys go and watch it, by the way, anyone listening. Uh, well, on that note, so for listeners to keep up with the project, it's intolightofficial.com, right? Okay, and then handles, are they also intolightofficial? Intolight film. Into light film. Okay. I was like, I follow it, but I have to go check. <laughs> and then for each of you individually, do you want to share um, whatever you're working on right now and how people can find you via social media, websites, whatever you feel comfortable sharing? Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> sure. Um, so you can find me on Instagram at Jessica Clark Graham. Um, and the best website to find me is yourwildawakening.com. And that's also where you can find a link for my book, which is called Good Sex, Getting Off Without Checking Out. And um, as far as film, I have a, a feature that I produced and acted in called The Tangle, yeah. um, which we're in the process of, of trying to get out into the world. And so hopefully later this year, it'll be available streaming. Um, and then Listen, the short film that I've mentioned a few times that Amy stars in, um, we haven't actually released that yet. It had a successful film festival run and um, we'll be releasing that online soon. We kind of, it didn't, it's about domestic violence. It's very, it's very dark. It's very challenging to watch. It didn't feel like um, this spring was the best time to release it. So we've kind of, we were planning to, and then we just yeah. sort of put it on hold. Um, but that'll be out there in the world, um, in the world soon. And then yeah um enjoying my little dog that i got um during during quarantine who i'm completely in love with so that's that's my and you know and a bunch of other stuff you know multi-passionate <laughs> martine do you want to go next yeah so my insta is martine for insta and my uh, website is kelly pictures k-a-l-i pictures.com it's i named it from the goddess kelly who's uh, the goddess of the destruction of the ego. Uh, I thought that was very fitted to Hollywood. Um, and I'm working on the multiple projects, um, TV, I have three TV series, I have four features. Um, I have a couple of reality shows. Um, so I'm not gonna start going into them because that could be a whole podcast by itself, but um, I, have a, I have a lot of projects I'm working on and um, one of them with Amy. Yay. And I, for Instagram and Facebook uh, and YouTube, I'm a, uh, at Amy Walker Official. And then Twitter is still my OG, at Amiable Walker. And my website is amywalkeronline.com. 
And I've got, it depends on how things are dist distributed, but I've got a few features coming out this year uh, if everything works. And of course this project and we've got plans for taking that further on. Uh, so excited about that. And then tomorrow I fly out at dawn of course, this will be tomorrow, a couple weeks ago by the time this goes live, but I'm going to star in um, A Doll's House Part 2, which is an incredible play, nine Tony winning, about all of this stuff, because apparently it's all about women's empowerment for me right now. That's what the universe is giving me. Uh, so it's a, it's an incredible cast and a really timely, we're going to socially distance it all, even the play, which will give it a, a heightened meaning, and i um, really excited about that. That's amazing. Well, congratulations, ladies. It sounds like you're all busy, which is awesome. And thank you all. Congrats on your podcast. Oh, thank you. And listeners, thank you as always. Like I said, this will wrap up this season, but we'll be back out here next week. So you won't even know the difference. <laughs> but thank you all for listening. And we will keep you listeners updated on everything we've talked about today as well. So we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to Femme Regard Podcast. If you like what you hear, tune in next time for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals over tea. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and give us a five-star review on Apple Podcast. If you leave us a great comment, we might give you a shout-out on the show. For more on us, check us out at femregard.com.